Abdullah Gondal organized a conversation with Omar Abdul Fattah of Ask a Muslim Facebook page, which has 1.5 million Facebook followers, by the way. Look how Abdullah Gondal shows him how the Quran makes huge scientific blunders. Gondal points up example after example on how Muslims want to have the cake and eat it too by claiming scientific miracles. But then when there's a scientific mistake in the Quran, they say, oh, you interpreted it wrong. That's not what it means. The discussion was gold. Check it out. So uh, you brought up Dhulkarnayn, and that's a very peculiar topic because uh, with Dhulkarnayn, the 1886, where the sun is setting in a mur murky pond, when you look at the, the, the interpretation of the first four or 500 years of Islamic scholarship mm -hmm. and exegesis, you see them actually believing it to be literal. Uh, you see Tabari, great scholar who actually thinks that it's actually going in a pond and he brings hadiths to support that view. And we actually have two sahih hadith, uh, one in Abu Dawud and then one uh, was uh, by Sheikh Al-Ambani in Silsalat al sahiha mm. that tell you that, yes, Muhammad was riding a donkey or a, with Abu Dar, who was one of the, his sahabi. Mm. And then Muhammad asked him, do you know where the sun goes? And he says, Allah wa alam, Rasul and the, yes. Allah knows best. And then he I says, yeah. indeed, it goes into the pond and stuff. And it says it goes under the arsh from what no, I recall there, the hadith. There's, there's two different ones. So there's one that says it goes under the arsh, it stops as a sajda to, the, uh, to Allah, mm -hmm. then asks his permission to go come up again. Mm -hmm. Now, that itself is very co contradictory because it never really stops anywhere because the earth mm -hmm. is, is a globe and ellipsoid. Uh, but then there's the hadith that continues on. There's two sahih narrations. One is sahih in chain and the other is in Sallallahu Sahih, which says that Muhammad affirmed the literal setting of the sun into a murky pond. I, if you want to see it, I actually found that one. I can screen share it with you. Let me just. Yes, please. So this is the one. If you can see, this is from uh, uh, Sahih al Jami al Sagid. What is and that book? It's uh, from Sheikh al -Amani. It's a collection of Sahih hadith, and he's graded the narrations right next to it. Is Sahih or not? Uh, it says, Hal tandruna fi uh, from Abi Thar, which means that it goes and yeah. sits in a pond of murky or boiling water. What's the... Sorry, this book is is what book again? Sahih al Jami al Sagir. It's uh, from, I think, Sheikh al -Amani. He compiled... Uh, it's a part, he takes the Sahih Hadith from the six Sihasat and more so like Musnad Ahmad, Musnad Abdul Abdul Razak yeah, and all yeah. the other books and he puts them all together and it's a, it's like a compilation. Uh, this, yeah, this is, so that, oh, there's another one, I'll actually yeah. see if I can find that one. This one, yeah. So this is in uh, in Sunan Abu Dawud as well. Yeah. You can see the highlighted part, it says فَإِنَّهَا تَغْرَبُ فِي أَيْنٍ حَامِيَةٍ that it sets in a spring of uh, warm water. Yeah. And this yeah, seems to water. incline towards a more literal uh, understanding of the verse 1886. Hmm. I would, I, again, I would say like, we have to, we have to be careful with how we interpret things, especially from 1400 years ago. Um, so the way I, I see it, and, and we have to see how like Arabs at the time would have interpreted it. So, is he wrong by saying that it does indeed set into like if you look at it it does indeed set into a, a like a spring of, of murky water does it literally mean that it is literally going in because if we think about the size of the sun and i don't think this would have been too hard to figure out how could the sun possibly fit into a, a spring of, of murky water right well, so yeah that's kind of that's that, kind of that yeah but then also like if you look at the if you read tabari itself and i think it's volume uh, the one about its creation, I think it's volume two and it's pages 140 something. It says that it the sun is carried on chariot and it goes into this murky spring and then it goes underneath the earth, goes does the sajda under the Allah's arsh and it comes yeah. back out again. And Tabari, as you know, is like a great exegete of the Quran, like nobody yeah. comes near to him. Yeah. And but. he then supports his view using these hadiths too. Mm. So uh, one is perplexed, like Muhammad is echoing the understanding of the time. And also the, the idea of Hamya, the boiling water, mm. is Hamya. also attributed to the sun going in and boiling the water itself. Mm. It's only much later is mm. when uh, the, the, the normative view that the earth isn't actually flat and then the sun is actually huge later on becomes more relevant is when these interpretations change. Now, one of the other things I found... Uh, in this was 
تفسير الجلالين when it says about 8820 وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت. I'll screen share you that one too so you can see it. It's this one. Um, so here, uh, Jalalain tells us that most people, this was written in the 15th century, mm. most people at that time of the revealed law believed that the earth was flat and they would induce this from the Quran and Sunnah. But it doesn't still contradict, uh, it says it's okay to hold the other view as well, but most solid view of the scholars of the religion was that the earth is flat right and it circles back to the point that i was making is the quran actually doesn't have any real science in it it's actually mostly the a projection of the understanding of people of the time and then what we're doing now is we know that it conflicts with modern understanding and now we have to come back and try to make it reconcile with it so if I may respond to, to some of these. Um, so just obviously, like I said, the interpretation of, of scholars, they were doing the best at, at their time. Um, and so if they, and I, for example, I've seen, for example, Ibn Kathir's uh, explanation of, of the verse, and we are its expanders. He says Allah is able to expand it, right? He was going by the knowledge that he had, and, and they're going by the knowledge that they had at the time. To me, one of the beautiful things about this is that the Quran is presented in a way, and I know people might say like, well, why is that? But per the Quran is presented in a way that its meaning can be broad enough to encompass different scientific paradigms. So at the time, if people thought that it was flat, they could use this verse to say maybe, okay, well, the Quran is, is they could use the verse to say that, okay, the earth is flat based off their knowledge. But for people like myself, like imagine, for example, if 1400 years ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, the earth is actually, it's a, it's a sphere. Who thought, who, like, was the majority thinking that it was a sphere? No. If people thought that, if, like, if somebody heard that, they'd be like, oh, this guy is definitely crazy. Like, no, we're not going to believe in him. But it, like you said, it was presented, and I, I, I agree with you on this point, that it was presented to a people so that they could understand it. But at the same time, the beauty of it is that it can be interpreted. And these aren't far fret, like, these aren't far extending interpretations. The, the Quran can be easily interpreted to accommodate different areas, different places, different, different phases of time. And, and when it comes to like the scientific miracles, um, again, I don't necessarily see them. I don't paint it as scientific miracles because that's not the wording of the Quran. But uh, the way I see it is that there are verses in the Quran that clearly uh, like they, they can be they can be observed and they can be attested whether they're right or wrong. And let's say, in my opinion and what I've seen, 100 percent of these verses that we can actually observe are correct. They are consistent with what we know. Well, so, I mean, that's that's where I disagree with you, where hmm. you're saying that. Uh, verses that can be interpreted with science are seem to be 100% correct, but like I'm showing you the verses that actually are making claims about science that don't align with science. You say that, oh, reinterpretation will make it go away. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like hiding or playing a, a cat and mouse game where anything that matches with science, it's, oh, subhanAllah, mm -hmm. but anything that doesn't, yeah. we're going to use interpretation to somehow skew it. But there's no objectivity yeah. to it, and that's I, why and I, we should I'm, leave mm -hmm. the Quran and not put any science in it whatsoever. Because like I said, it can backfire. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give you one more, uh, you know about sure. Sheikh uh, Uthaymeen, right? Like, I've heard, yeah, the modern, more modern, modern, yeah. Famous scholar, like, and he wrote a book, uh, I'll screen share this as well, because this is very staggering, and this is a very recent uh, opinion of him in his fatawa al Uthaymeen, he goes out of his way to explain that the sun actually goes around the earth and not the other way he promotes a geocentric view if you can see this uh let me make the screen bigger there's a whole uh whole like explanation where he goes over this saying that the, the sun is actually going around the earth. This proves that both of them are moving and revolving around the earth. For if it were the earth that revolved around them, the moon would not be following the sun. And he then is using the, if you, you can see, like... I can't actually the, read that, but... Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Like, I can send you the post later on, but sure, there's sure. Uh, verses and hadith that he's using to derive this opinion. Mm. And he uses the uh, exact kind of words, too. Uh, the hadith we were talking about earlier mm. as well like it goes under the arsh and stuff yeah and he says on the commentary and so it is quite clear from his words return from where you came that it is the sun that revolves around the earth and it is due to its revolution that the sunrise and sunset occur mm. 
Whereas in fact, we know that it's quite the opposite. That's what's yeah. happening in reality. So, so how would you understand these blatant conflicts between the Quranic cosmology and modern science? So uh, with all due respect to Sheikh Khotamin, he's not a scientist. <laughs> he's an, he's yeah. a legal scholar. He's, he's not a scientist. So I'm not going to go and learn science uh, from him. Like just, just logic, right? Um, that's kind of... That's pretty much that's pretty much the way I see it. So when when it comes to these verses that, like I said, they can be interpreted in multiple ways. I think logically they can be interpreted in a way that accommodates the modern paradigm. Uh, but I'm not going to go and take the definite statements of scholars in the past who aren't physical scientists and use them as say this is actually what Allah means because who can speak for Allah right other than himself, and that's the Islamic belief. So okay. So then, wouldn't you say that even the best of scholars and the most advanced people in Arabic linguistics wouldn't be weren't able to understand Allah's word correctly enough, and that Allah misled people or gave a message that was so unclear that it gave completely opposing views on reality for 14 centuries? Wouldn't that look bad on an omniscient God not being clear enough? Uh, no. As the verse that I've I've uh, told you earlier, chapter three, verse seven. Uh, Allah says, "Who is the one who gave you the book? Who are the rules and the commandments? He has sent down the book. Of it are the verses that are clear cut. Like there's no doubt about them. Kullu Allahu Ahad. You can't interpret that in more than one way. Say He is Allah, the One. Lam uh, Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He's not begot, nor does He begot, nor is He begotten. These are the foundations of Islam." All these other things like the stories and the, the stories of Lord Karnayn and the things about astronomy, maybe they can be. I, I can, I'll, I'll give you that. Some verses certainly can be because Allah says it in, in the Quran. They can be interpreted in multiple ways, but they don't make or break someone's faith in the in, okay. tawheed, in the fundamentals of Islam. Okay, but then earlier in the video, didn't you say that science and the Quran making these scientific proclamations that align with, with modern science that nobody could have known back in the day, you were mm. using that as evidence for Islam, but now that, that was in my I, journey at the time. That okay. was my journey at the time. I don't. Okay. I don't go and say this today. I, okay. I think I, I use it as an added thing that say it's, it's kind of a little bit profound in my opinion. But I don't say that Islam is true because it's consistent with science. That's not my fundamental okay. argument. Okay. Okay. And also, then um, I would ask: Isn't it also circular reasoning to then use the Quranic verses to then explain away these discrepancies? You're using the Quran. If there's a discrepancy with science or understanding of our reality, oh, the Quran says it's supposed to be like that. You know, isn't that circular logic? Uh, no, no. Just I'm just responding to what you said about like how God would try to like mislead a bunch of, of people, but he he clearly says that there are some verses that are clear cut. There's no you can't misinterpret them, and there's other verses that are that can be up to interpretation, but they are not. I guess you could say the foundations of the religion. Like when Allah says, mm -hmm. lahmul khanzir. The, the flesh of the swine, that's it. These are these are muhkamat, like these okay. are these are jurisprudence. So so that's kind of I don't use that circle. I don't would I would not consider that circular. But reason. then doesn't Allah say that He's explained His book Mufassulul uh, Ayat and then in uh, Surah fifty four Surah Qamar it goes into detail yeah. saying repeating the phrase that Mufassulul Ayat li mean yeah for people and then, for people and He describes them in different ways yeah. 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 Uh, and then it also says that it's a book that for people who think it's very clear. Yeah. So it seems like a very contradictory like kind of uh, place that some verses that are fine to you subjectively, they're amazing, they're clearly explained, but then mm. some of them that don't align with, the, with modern understanding of uh, Islam and science, those are pushed away into the mutashabihat, you say, the doubts, right? Yeah, and some verses, I mean... It, it, for example, Allahu Nurus Samawati Wal Ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. You won't find too many people, even though the verse says that, you won't find too many people who literally say Allah is literally the light of the sun. Yeah. Right? You won't find. So obviously some verses they have to be interpreted in certain ways. Um, but just to go back to like there's the way I see it and what, how many people have said it is that it's a book of signs. So Allah directs you to certain signs like uh, Do they not look at how the camel it, it was made? Right. So things like that. And for me, when I read verses like this and like, you know, Allah directs you to the alteration of the night and day and then, you know, the phases of the moon and stuff like that. These these make sense to me. They like and, and again, these are verses. Allah doesn't say that they're verses for everyone. These are, he doesn't say that they're signs for everyone. These are verses for people who believe that there is something out there. So what you and I may be looking at the same thing and I would say, oh, my God, mashallah, tabarakallah. And you might say, 
science is great you know okay. <laughs> like you know what i mean so. so so basically what you're saying is you're presupposing the quran as the word of god mm -hmm. and then that presupposition overrides every other thing that might contradict the quran because you're presupposed that the quran says something about science or whatever about reality the quran wins despite not giving evidence for its claims whereas somebody who's making scientific claims despite giving lots of evidence mm -hmm. is still wrong because the quran is your presupposition is that correct no, no. No. So just to go back to the Quran being the preposition as the word of God, the one the one claim that we make uh, as Muslims, uh, that, and this comes from the Quran itself, and it says, if you are in doubt about this book's divine nature, then produce a chapter like it, which we can get into. Um, oh, perfect. But so so that's that's the one claim that I express because that comes from the Quran itself. Now, when it comes to science and all these other things and dinosaurs and aliens and all this, wh whatever, like anything that we're presented, Allah says he, when he describes the people, he says, uh, Indeed, with time, mankind is at loss. Except for those people who believe and do good and encourage people towards truth and encourage people towards patience. So whatever truth is out there, I, I encourage it open, open heartedly and open mindedly. Like if somebody's saying, look, there are dinosaurs. If somebody says, look, the earth is actually flat or the earth is circular whatever it may be whatever the people say i say okay give me give me your evidence let's talk about it right so muslims are people who are encouraged who encourage towards truth they don't hide away from it they don't shy away from it that's my understanding of the faith thanks for watching this clip if you like this content please consider supporting the channel i have about 30 monthly supporters and i would like to get this number to at least 100 this will help me spend more time on this project details are below thank you so much this is Abdullah Samir signing out.